Hello folks. Yes, well, as you can see I'm putting on my gloves. I'm about to perform an operation. <laughs> well, yeah I've got, I've got a load of um, I've got a load of these paddles here which um, they've been um, they've had to keep practicing written on them and now I'm gonna I just go over them with some with some linseed oil work it in to it's nice it brings out the color of the grain and it also of course protects the wood doesn't it and um, I like pottery tools that are made of wood I think wood is a is a sympathetic material to work alongside clay and it's one of the things I do like doing is working off working on a wooden on a wooden treadle wheel and um, and I like tools that are made of wood that we can use to uh, use with the clay as we are fashioning it fashioning it so yeah I've got here some also some um, I've done these these are you know doing the the neck neck tools inside of inside of like for example if you're if you're working inside a bottle like that and you want to make an adjustment to the shoulder say here then you would slip that down through it won't fit at the moment because it's too small in the top but in other words that for making adjustments to the shoulder of a pot or for reaching further down in after you've after you've narrowed the neck these are not for use before these are when you've narrowed the neck and you've got a small a small opening then you would put that down inside and make any adjustments that you need to do that's what these are for the useful tools to have if you if you make um, if you make bottles with with narrow necks so Yes, and the, the the linseed oil that I'm putting on here, it nourishes the wood and protects the wood. In this case, the, the, this this particular wood I'm, uh, we have here, this is cherry, which is a very nice wood for for making tools out of. It has a nice rich colour and the grain can be quite interesting at times but it's also d durable from the point of view of y you know use etc could be good for some table tennis as well couldn't it you know we could we could have a pottery table tennis class Anybody play table tennis out there? I play table tennis. <laughs> when I've got when I've got a table, I haven't got a table at the moment. But so yeah, after I've after I've got here also a bunch of these um, these throwing sticks, which I do the same treatment to. Um, it it doesn't hurt, you know, to put a bit of get you get your pottery tools and clean them and get some linseed oil and just put a bit of give them a bit of love you know do you give your tools any love 
or do you just leave your tools in the water pot till the next time you throw? Huh. When I when I was a kid growing up in in Devon, England, my parents had a we actually had a pretty large house. It was really far too large. I think my parents bought it with the with the point of with the with the idea in mind that it would be great for the for the children and my two elder brothers who were like teenagers at the time or oh, older teenagers it would be great for them because they'd be able to take an interest in the garden and all of this but what happened well when as soon as as soon as they that's Jeremy and Johnny my elder brother Johnny and Jeremy when they got older were they interested in the garden <laughs> not at all so basically my poor parents got left lumbered with this four and a half acres of it was a beautiful it was a beautiful garden. It had it had its own vegetable patch. It it had where the pottery building is. Um pottery was there. And then it, it had um the actual the actual house itself was built by a certain major hole and major hole when he was young and when he you know at the beginning of the 19th century 1905 or whatever it was they had servants so the house had servants quarters and i remember as a kid um every room in the house had a bell that you could push i remember if you i have one in my bedroom and if you press the bell I ran downstairs as fast as I could, this flight of stairs, and down into the hallway, and scoot left, and down the end of this passageway into the, the into the servants' quarters. There was like a, a a board, a board up on the wall, which it had these little windows that corresponded to every room in the house. And there, I would look up, and my where my bedroom, the little window that corresponded to to my bedroom. There would be a little thing in the window going like this. <laughs> so one of the, per the one of the servants would have seen that, that that Simon had called, and would then come up to the to that particular room to ask what it whatever it was that that Simon required. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this in this big house. So of course I. Both my my brothers, of course, were a lot older than me, and um, and so very soon they had left left home, you know. So anyway, my dad used to say to me, as I was a kid growing up, and I'd be bored. Sometimes I'd be bored, and my dad would say to me, "Come on, Simon, I want you to do a job for me. I want you to." See you, and he'd take me to some weed-stricken part of the garden, along some pathways, you know, where weeds had grown. And he said, "Sam, now weed this. I want you to weed this." I seem to remember he said to me, "Now, Simon, if you do this well, I'll give you sixpence." <laughs> so, but you know what? After after I'd done the gardening sometimes, I'd, I'd leave the tools out, you see. I'd leave the tools out. He'd tell me to put the tools away in case it rained. And a lot of the tools had wooden handles. And, you know, of course, if you leave tools out in the rain a lot, and in England it rains a lot, then the wooden handles, they rot. So, you know, sometimes I had to go after after supper I had to go out and find the tools that I hadn't put away and put them away because I hadn't remembered to put them away before so well what is the lesson from this story Simon? <laughs> well, the lesson from this the moral of this story is Maybe you're one of those potters that leaves your tools in the water pot. Maybe you leave your sponge in there. Maybe you leave your leather in there. 
maybe you leave your throwing stick in there and maybe you leave other things in your water pot and you leave them there until the next time you come you come to sit down on the wheel well what happens to them they rot <laughs> your leather rots your sponge rots your sponge on a stick rots everything everything that's left in the water it rots so maybe you're not one of those people maybe you're one of those meticulous potters who after every time they've thrown they 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 get their tools and wash them off clean them off and keep them nice and dry well that's actually a better it's a better plan really to do that but if you you know maybe your maybe your tools maybe they need a bit of TLC tender loving care maybe they need a holiday a vacation maybe they need a little bit of linseed give them a new lease of life so give them give them some linseed keep them nice and dry when you're not using them i tell you what i'm the, i'm not i'm probably a, as bad as anybody else out there and i i have to confess often i come along and i think ugh why did I leave why you know why did I leave it all in there in the water pot and I take it out and put it on the side you know it's better like that than just leaving them soaking for days on end yeah well these paddles are fairly recent I and I use them to do those um, those star pots, you've seen the star pots I've I've done. Or maybe you haven't. I don't know. Actually, I've got one there on the board. I can show you quickly. Let me just dry my hands a bit because they've got linseed on them. That's a star pot, you see. You can use you can use a, a paddle like that to, to do that. It gives quite a nice effect, I think. And, and you know, and that when it's um, when the glaze breaks over it, especially if it's say like a temaku glaze, the stars are highlighted. They can stand out. The glaze breaks over them. So that's what the, that's what I use these for, and they're um, they're fun to make those pots actually. Yep. Yeah, after I put the linseed oil on them, I just leave them here out in the air to air dry until they're kind of touch dry, you know. My first, um, I was just thinking about uh, linseed oil. Maybe you're not familiar with linseed oil. This is linseed oil made from linseeds. <laughs> But when I when I my first introduction to linseed oil was when I was at school. Uh, when I was at school, I went to a boarding school, um, and um, we used to play cricket, and we used to. Um, you know, set up the, 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 the wicket. That's the, the stumps at each end. And there'd be the, in this box where everything was carried, there'd be, you know, the, the wicket keeper's pads, his gloves, cricket balls and cricket bats. 
I always remember the cricket bats, at least at the beginning of term and beginning of the season or beginning of term, they were they'd been oiled with linseed oil and they had this I remember that lovely smell of linseed oil. I remember thinking, God, I love the smell of this. It's just it's kind of nice enough to eat. Anyway. But wood, wood loves linseed oil. And it protects. Anyway, there you are folks, just uh, a few anecdotes <laughs> to what might otherwise be a relatively boring clip maybe, but you know, we always find something to talk about, don't we? And the last one. Yep. So, that's all there is to be said. Keep practicing. See you soon. Bye. Dee, 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 dee.